Oh, hello, it's uh, Paul to Echo Zero Echo India Juliet, and today I'll be stroke portable again. Uh, you might have noticed in the last uh, video that I did, it was I was operating portable from the old race course in Richmond in North Yorkshire. Unfortunately, only to be thwarted by um, uh, pager transmissions, and uh, that my Lexian VV eight nine eight. I really don't know how you pronounce the make of that. So, if I got it wrong, I've got it wrong. Um, anyway, back to the subject at hand. The VV898 suffered badly from pager intermod, and there was not really a lot I could do about it, so I don't have anything that could filter it out. Um, so, today, what I've done is I've packed, alongside the VV898, uh, the QIT KT8900D, which I use as my home rig. Um, as that's also a mobile type rig, it'll run off uh, 12 volts happily, so that's not a problem. Um, however, it's the pager intermod. Will the 8900D work better in that sort of environment? Now, I still haven't located the pager transmitter yet. Um, that is beyond that is beyond me at the moment. I haven't got a clue where to look for it. Um, uh, it could be on the on the tall tower on on the Gallifield estate in Richmond, which would be quite unlikely because not far from there, I know for a fact there's a broadcast band transmitter as well for for rather good radio. Um, I don't think having a pager transmitter in close proximity to to a broadcast band transmitter is a good idea. Um, and also there are mobile phone transmitters on that on that tower. I know that much as well, which I. Th I think, I think it's either EE or O2, one of the two. Some I'll have to find that out from uh, from another source. Um, so I'm at a bit of a loss as where the pager transmitters at. There's I know there's two radio towers just up the road from here. I uh, can't see them from my location, uh, but they're used um, uh, as part of the 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 airwave um, uh, network that's used by the emergency services. So I know it's not there. So I am really at a bit of a loss as to where these pager transmitters are. But one thing is certain that they are very powerful and they were wiping out anything on my um, uh, 898. So unfortunately, I'm going to have to um, uh, hope that my QIT 8900D works or alternatively look into getting um, uh, a notch filter. I've looked into this already after the last video, and I know it can be done. Um, I happen to know that they are available commercially, but uh, somewhere in the region of, I think it's 100 US dollars. It's an American company that makes them. Uh, so I'll see what happens. Um, I'm going to head up to the grandstand now with all the kit and get set up. And I'm going to have a listen, and I will report back. Right. Not sure you can see the display very well because it is a bit, a bit sunny out, or it was. It's just still quite bright, and I don't think the display on that works very well during the day. Um, but I've got the 8900D out and all plugged in, set up, all antenna tuned. Whilst I had the SWR meter in line, I had a flick about with the with the squelch open. Um, See if I can adjust the display on that first, just to make it look a bit brighter. I'm sure there's an option to do that. Um, if there isn't, there isn't. Yeah, see display brightness. Might draw a little bit more power. Yeah, there's something trying to break the squelch there, but I'm not sure what it is. Might be pages, might not be. Let's see if I can find the display brightness. See if there is one to turn it up. No, I don't think there is. Yeah. No, it doesn't appear to be one. No, that will have to do with that. Um, so, I'm not sure you can see it. So, that's GB3IR at the moment. You'll see there's obviously four, four frequencies that can monitor. We're only interested in the section with the arrow next to it at the top of the screen. Now if I press this, which is this, opens the squelch, you can just about hear the pager noise in the background. Just. It's barely. If I go for the next one, that's only sem, so we'll ignore that. 
to there. You just barely hear it. It's quite strong on the ISS frequency, which kind of makes ISS operating from here probably not going to happen without the right filtering. So it looks like I will need an notch filter for that. You just out hear it in the noise there. So this I think is doing a little bit better with the intermod than, than the uh, previous radio. So I think we're I think I found a better radio, but the 898 was absolutely hopeless. Fortunately, the S meter likes to disappear. So let's find a right, let's find the channel I was testing on. That's the calling channel. So if I wanted to put a call out now, I'd have to hope that whatever come, comes back to me, comes back to me above that. That's what I'm getting at the moment, pager noise on the calling channel. That isn't good. The channel I normally test on, which is S21. That's also getting the same sort of pager noise on it, so fortunately not a lot can be done. But it seems that that pager transmitter, wherever it is, is wiping out both these radios. Uh, I've not tried it with anything am dedicated amateur equipment because uh, these radios, although the, the amateur market tends to use these, um, they're actually more designed for mobile PMR use, as I mentioned in the video for the 898. So. Yeah, this is, this is all those is a great place for radio. It's not as great as I was expecting. So I'll see if I can get a couple of QSOs, and I'll leave that in the um, uh, YouTube video description. But th this basically con is conclusive proof that this radio, although a little bit better at rejecting the pages, doesn't doesn't completely get rid of them. So, anyways, so this is Paul to Echo Zero, Echo India Juliet, a stroke portable. Uh, wishing you 7-3. Um, I'm going to put the comments on. Uh, so, so you can comment on this one as well. Regarding the pager intermod issue. I mean, I think the, all these Chinese radios are probably susceptible to it. So, nothing we can do. Anyways, 7-3. And I'll let you know how I do in the description below.